The Wood Whisperer is sponsored by Powermatic and Typebond. So you might recall a couple months ago I made my Deadpool head bandsaw box, which was actually only the second box I've ever made. The first one happened the day before, and that was my practice box that's more of a, a simple trapezoid shape. Uh, and I did film it, and that's what I'm going to show you here today in sort of a step-by-step, -step, so you could see how simple this process is. Just a series of steps, but when you look at the finished piece, it's a little bit mind-boggling on how exactly you make a drawer inside of a solid block of material like this. Uh, now, because it was my first time, fortunately, I had on the shelf uh, David Picciuto's Bandsaw Box book, and he's got a number of designs in here ranging from more complex stuff to really beginner-friendly things. One of those is the Tennessee box, which obviously was an influence on the box that I made here, so you might see some resemblance there. But if you're uh, looking to get into Bandsaw Boxes, this book is a really good place to start. All right, so let's get to the build. I'm lucky to have some 12 quarter walnut on hand for this. I'll mill up two pieces so that I can glue them together for a nice deep box. You can also stack up numerous layers of thinner material for some cool effects. In my case, both pieces have a decent amount of sapwood on one face, so I'll glue those faces together to give the illusion of grain continuity. As you can see, my pieces aren't exactly the same size, but it doesn't matter. This is just a rough blank. Once the glue dries, I can square up one edge, which will serve as a reference surface for the pattern. I just drew this shape on a piece of paper. It's seven inches at the top, five and a half inches at the bottom, and four and a half inches tall with half inch thick walls. I didn't make a printable pattern because it's pretty easy to draw. The first cut establishes the outside of the box. The blade cuts pretty cleanly, but the box definitely needs a little bit of sanding to smooth it out. Next, cut a half inch slice off the back of the blank. This will be our box back. Now here's where the magic happens. Begin cutting in from the outside of the blank, aiming for the interior line. This cut establishes the inside walls of the box, while simultaneously releasing the drawer blank. Keep in mind there are no do-overs with this cut. The wider and more jagged the cut line, the sloppier the fit of the drawer. So try to make one continuous smooth cut. The walls should spring open just enough to allow you to stop the saw, raise the guard, and remove the pieces. The outside shell is the box itself, so we'll glue it back together right on the cut line. The cut is rough, but it should nest together pretty well. Be sure to wipe away the glue squeeze out on the inside, that stuff is no fun to clean up later. Once dry, it's time to glue on the back. Now I didn't film it because I honestly wasn't sure that it was a good idea, but I did some sanding on the back as well as the box rim in order to smooth them out and remove the bandsaw ridges. Turns out that worked very nicely and the glue line becomes all but invisible. When the back is dry, the sides of the box can be sanded and smoothed and we can remove the template schmutz from the front. I'm sure with some practice, the initial cut line will become less visible, but for now, it can benefit from a little bit of brown colored filler. Once the finish is applied, it should look passable. The box then gets a little decorative roundover. The roundover on the inside is nice too, because it helps hide some of the discrepancies between the box opening and the drawer. Speaking of the drawer, let's make it. Start by cutting off the back of the drawer blank. Next, cut off the front. Now make sure you keep these pieces in order. On the remaining blank piece, draw a half inch line around the sides and the bottom to mark out the drawer cavity, and then cut it out. Smooth the inside however you can, as this won't be easy to do once we have a front and back glued back on. By the way, I'm using Type Bond Original for this glue up, which tends to leave a light colored glue line. 
Type On makes another product called Type On Dark Wood Glue, which is a great choice for woods like walnut. And especially on a project where we're trying to create an illusion by hiding joints, this is a good idea. This project was just a practice run for me, so I wasn't too worried about it. Once the glue is dry, clean up the exterior of the drawer. Keep in mind, the more material you remove, the looser the fit. That's why it's so important to get the cleanest cut possible right off the bandsaw. The drawer then gets the same roundovers as the box. Now for some fine sanding and the finishing touches. Because plagiarism is a detestable thing, I'm going to completely differentiate my trapezoid box from Pachudo's. You see how his drawer pull mimics the shape of his box? Well, I'm turning my pull upside down. So yeah, totally different. The pull will be cut from walnut sapwood for a little bit of contrast. I start with a small strip that has two rabbits cut into the sides. I then cut two small dados at the appropriate angles. Now I can make angled through cuts to release the pull. This method results in a pull that sits up off of the drawer front surface, making it easier to grasp. A little cleanup and it's time to glue the pull to the drawer. The finish will be an oil varnish blend. Just a couple of coats wiped on and wiped off will really bring the walnut to life. To apply the material, I'm using a small piece of white Scotch-Brite pad and then wiping back with some blue shop towels. All right, so that's all there is to it. A simple bandsaw box, it's actually pretty easy, right? Like once you know the series of steps and you have a good piece of material that reinforces this illusion of a big thick block of wood, you can make something pretty awesome. It's like anything in woodworking, it's just a series of steps. I say it all the time, but it bears repeating. All right, thanks for watching everybody. We'll catch you next time.